The Prime Minister and the Premier of Ontario celebrating what will be the largest auto part investment in Canadian history and detailing the money they're putting up to make it happen. Volkswagen will build a massive electric vehicle battery plant in St. Thomas, Ontario. The government saying it will create 3,000 direct jobs and another 30,000 indirect ones. Construction will start in 2024 with the plant ready for production in 2027. It all comes with a big price tag, VW is spending $7 billion, the federal government is investing $700 million and putting up up to $12 billion more in subsidies over a decade. And the Ontario government is giving $500 million and then what they say will be hundreds of millions more in infrastructure. So, are Canadians getting a fair deal? Let's bring in Industry Minister François-Philippe Champagne. Hello, Minister, and, and thank you for being there. So now that we have a bit of transparency on the cost of this mega project, could you just tell us specifically what share will be the Canadian taxpayer's share? Well, you know, what matters for Canadians is five years. Five years is the payback on this investment. So the economic impact of uh, this investment will be equivalent to uh, the contribution of the government of Canada in five years. That's the size uh, of this investment, and that's why it's so relevant. But one thing that needs to be clear, Joyce, and I think it was pretty clear from the discussion today, we are Canada. We never win on the money. We win because we have talented people. We win because we have strong ecosystem. We win because we have access to critical mineral. We win because we have access to renewable energy. And we win because we have access to market. I was intricately uh, involved in these discussions from the first call to the last call. And I can tell you that every step of the way, the discussion was around talent. Do you have the people to make it work? Volkswagen is coming in Canada for the next 100 years. They're not looking at optimizing for a couple of years for them. But obviously, in a competitive environment, you have to level the playing field. That's what we said to Canadian in the fall economic statement. That's what we did. But I would say when you have a payback of five years, I think any banker would tell you that's a pretty good investment. No, I understand that. But we're hearing anywhere between $8 billion and $13 billion. So could, it, could you be more specific? Could you explain to people who are listening to us when does the money roll out and what kind of money are we talking about? So the first thing is that, for Canadians to understand, Volkswagen needs to spend $7 billion to build a factory. When the factory is going to be built, there will be production support if and when they manufacture and they sell batteries subject to the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States and over 10 years. So that's the frame that people are looking at. And what we've seen is that this investments will generate anything between $200 billion to 400 billion over the next 30 years. So that's why this is a transformational investment. This is about us leading in the economy of the future. And I would tell you, uh, this is gonna be the largest manufacturing site in Canada. So that's why I'm saying that what really matters for Canadians at the end of the day is that when you have a five years payback and a company is gonna be here and investing in our workers, investing in our community for, for 100 years, that's why I'm saying this is a very good deal, and that's why there was so much competition to land a deal like Volkswagen. Okay, so, so we hear that production is set to start in 2027. So what I think people are wondering is what needs to be done by then. You will need to build the plant. That's clear. That's obvious. You also need to reach those critical minerals. So there will be an infrastructure to be built. What kind of infrastructure are you talking about? Roads, rails, what we're talking about is a huge mega project, but it's, is, is 2027 realistic and what has to be done between now and then? Well, you know, uh, we know our German fans are pretty organized. Obviously, they've been looking at that for a year. They have a very specific plan in order to build that. But I would agree with you, Joyce. I think it's something like we've never seen in Canada. This is going to be the largest manufacturing site in Canada. Uh, I was saying it's around 378 football fields to give a sense of perspective to Canadians. Uh, the CEO of the company was telling me from the parking lot to one of the facilities, it's going to be 1.6 kilometer uh, to reach. So this is, uh, this is a site like we've never seen before. 
And obviously around that, that's why we've been working with our provincial partner. Uh, there needs to be road access. Uh, there'll be a, a new fire station. There'll be police station. Uh, there needs to be everything. But what really is a game changer? And this is the first time in 35 years that we have attracted a new manufacturer in Canada. And it's the very first time that we have a European manufacturer coming to Canada. So that's why I'm saying this is such a moment for Canada. This is such a big win. Uh, you know, that's why I say, everyone, let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious because not only they're going to come here, but if you see the, uh, the space they're going to occupy, they're bringing the entire supply chain with them. So that's why we say it's going to create 3,000 direct jobs. But you're looking at something like 30,000 indirect jobs in the supply chain across the nation. So that's why this is so transformational. And this is really us seizing a generational opportunity to make sure that we invest in the economy of the future. So you're going to need to reach those critical minerals. So I'm wondering if you've cleared the way legally, if there will be any regulatory hurdles ahead. Uh, do you have support from indigenous communities? That will be essential. Uh, environmental groups as well. So is there a risk? Is it even possible that the project gets tied up in court and delayed? Can you tell viewers that that is already taken care of? Well, obviously, we've been working with the provinces, we've been working with the community, we've been working with the municipal government, uh, we've been working with First Nation, because obviously, uh, when you have an investment of that magnitude, that is going to be, let's be honest, transforming St. Thomas and London for generations to come. Like I was saying, uh, the CEO of the company said, Minister, we're not here for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, we're here for 100 years. So in that context, I would say that what you're seeing today uh, it is a community together, is a province, is a nation, and saying, obviously, we want to be part of that um, journey. And the plan that you're going to see here in St. Thomas is going to provide battery material for the equivalent of one million electric vehicles per year. Uh, this is kind of something we've never seen. Remember, St. Thomas, uh, uh, during uh, uh, you know, the last few decades, had lost jobs. Now we're going to be adding the jobs of the future right here in the community. And I can tell you from the mayor, from the chiefs, from the First Nations, from, from everyone that I've met, uh, that's why you see so much excitement. Also from the next generation, that the students that were with us, they can see themselves in the job of the future. That's why it's such a big win. So I guess in a way, this project is a response or is Canada's response to the Inflation Reduction Act down south that has put, this is Joe Biden putting hundreds of billions of dollars on the table to attract such projects to the United States. So without the IRA, do you think that the project that you're so enthusiastic about today would have been possible? Well, I often say that the IRA was a catalyst uh, for supply chain to come in North America. What you're seeing in the world is that global supply chain are becoming more regional and you see more emphasis on resiliency than pure efficiency. So for me, the area has been this catalyst of onshoring, of French shoring, something that I've been talking. You know, for me, I always say when you put manufacturing plus innovation, you equal prosperity. So yes, I think the area has been a good thing. And that's why we've seen investment like LG Stellantis. We've seen investment like Volkswagen. Uh, we've seen GM POSCO, uh, honestly. And, and you know what? Uh, what is interesting, Joyce, is, you know, the world took notice. When it's good for Volkswagen, it's good for everyone. And that's why today we're so happy uh, to be able to celebrate with the community here and, and to say, here we are. We're going to transform uh, this community. We're going to transform this part of Canada and, and leading in the economy of the future. Minister François-Philippe Champagne, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. I know it's, it's been a very busy day for you. Thanks a lot. It's been a great day for all of us. Thank you very much.